right guys we're down here in uh, cloudy florida today at the uh, alex line auction this is uh, one of four auctions down here in uh, florida in february that we'll be at so this one's actually a week long they've got all kinds of stuff down here um, we're going to go over and check out some excavators and dozers and take you guys around excavators lined up for as far as you can see both ways Big old case 800 over there. Deuce on. And a long reach Hyundai 300. Maruka dump trucks. Big old D9R there. Komatsu's. A bunch of the D7E's. These are actually electric. They've got a diesel engine powering a generator, then they've got um, electric drive motors that actually drive the tracks on them. So, the first electric dozer at Caterpillar come out with. And they've got the single blade lift cylinder there in the middle. We go 375 cat, 349s, 350s, PC 490. Some pretty new Tachis. probably come back through and do a walk around on a couple two or three pieces excavator and dozers and some uh, skid steers and stuff they all sell later on the week but we'll do a walk around check check a few out got some birds down here some rollers Rollers and wheel loaders down that way. It's like a pretty much new one there. Today they're selling uh, scissor lifts and main lifts, and bouncy houses and tools. What's going on? How you doing? tractors, some new trailers. And some bouncy houses over here. Somebody needs a bouncy house. Some flat bouncy house. Little Cushman scooters. A couple brand new Takahuchis. We got some not so new Takahuchis.
more bouncy houses waiting to be blowed up for tomorrow. Big old six uh, 37e model scrapers. They're big dudes. The haul trucks down through here. Backhoes. Big old, big old 710 two wheel drive. Bell haul trucks. And guy here doing a little pressure washing on some new equipment. Cleaning her all up. Some brand new Doosons. Import Komatsu's over there. your link belt excavators so if anybody knows in the comments below let me know what the similarities are between the case and the link belt excavators All right there's the case you guys know what the similarities are let me know in the comments below the same thing on the uh, bobcats and the uh, doosons now Kubotas. I got these sun words. I've never even seen these. I don't even know where they're made at. Probably made in China. Let's take a look at one. China. Some brand new ones. January of 22. I've uh, made the trek over here pretty quick. Sure. What kind of motor they got in them? Looks like a Kubota, yep. Got some emissions on them. Interesting. Be interesting to see what they bring. Where does a guy get parts for him? Not too bad of looking. Made in China. Big old 973s. That one in the middle's not looking real good. Funnel drive issues. Looks like it might be a fixer upper. And that one's even been welded on. I'm gonna guess that this one's come out of a landfill. Probably all three of them. All right, I found one real truck out of all these trucks that's sitting out here by itself. A little R600 Mac. It's got old Pennsylvania mud flaps on it. No date and wheels. Single frame. You don't even have Mac rear ends though. All that rear axle is not even a drive axle, is it? Just a single screw. Yep, this axle's just a dead axle back here. If we add it on to it, it come that way. 
So that's what you call a single screw. If it's double screw, it'd have two drive axles. This one just has one, one uh, drive axle. I don't know if that's a Mac, is it? I don't know. This is an older dude. New way suspension. Oh, it's got the old steel dash in it. These are pretty cool. What transmission's in it? This is an oldie for sure. It's not too bad a shape. You see the dash in this one? It's old steel dash. See what year it is. Looks like an old E6. Could be wrong. Was that old 237 or something? That frame narrows down there on there. So, you guys see that gold bulldog? Tags on top up there. What's that say? It's turbo. It's ENDT 675. This motor is a 1972 model. Can't see the horsepower. That thing's gold everywhere. So you guys see the gold bulldog on the front of the Mac? It uh, means that it's all Mac drive tra uh, engine transmission. If you got a silver bulldog on it, it means it's got a different uh, engine or transmission made by a different manufacturer other than Mac in it. But I think it's probably a early 70s, judging by the motor. But that gold dog on there. Old tag on there from 76 yet. See old steel dash in there? Pretty good shape for old as it is. There's that gold dog. So I said that thing's got a gold bulldog, so that means it'd have to have a Mac axle. That doesn't look like the old top loader, but I see way down here, it's got the old Mac on the back of the axle, so it is definitely all Mac drivetrain. Max suspension on it. So I've never seen one like that though. Usually they got the top loader where they drop in this way. It is an oldie for sure. All right, down here looking at some John Deere dozers I got down here. Dad's already got one of them fired up. I'm gonna give you a little walk around what we look for on them. It's an old 450. H. to spin the tracks when you put it under a load.
puts a charge pressure on it. pressure died. I'm looking at charge pressure there. Somebody's put a new dash in this. I know that's not the original dash. Those hours could are definitely not right. Oil pressure beeping. Yeah. I'm check the flow by on the engine. Rev it up a little bit. Got a little bit of blow by, not terrible, but make sure the radiator is not bubbling or building up pressure. Yeah, I'm not liking what I see in here. You uh, see, there's some oil in here, and this has got straight water in it too. It tells me it's got. To, See that kind of purpley got colors in it. That's got to, definitely got some oil in it. It's not showing any oil pressure. Not showing any oil pressure. I'm probably just gonna X this one out in the book because it ain't worthwhile. Other than that, it ain't the yeah. Problem is somebody's gonna not know the stuff's wrong with it and buy it as a good one, and it's not gonna be. These sprockets are getting really sharp here too. It's got a sprocket rail and motor work. Yeah, fortunately it will bring too much money to put anything into it. Somebody buy it thinking the motor's fine and definitely needs some sprockets on it. You probably get by the rails a little longer, but it is a shame because that one would clean up. We'll X that one out in the book. Jump over to this one. Got a 650H. I can already see it's got two bad rollers on it are leaking there pretty bad check the bushings are pretty good on the uh, rails there so we're looking at uh, several different things in the undercarriage these rollers are wore plumb out um, they've got that much that much flange sticking on them it's on the battery dead I have to get you a jump pack so the bushings on the tracks is what uh, rubs in the sprockets. These sprockets are actually pretty new. They're they're uh, not ovaled out and they're not sharp. But the undercarriage has probably been put on the last uh, 500, 750 hours. Those pads are probably original. I'm guessing the machines. I think that says 7,900 hours. So, 8, huh? 8,400. They're probably original pads in the machine. Another thing we'll look for on the uh, track chains is how far that's stretched out. Um, that's where that front arthur's sitting. I just know from experience this one's got plenty of adjustment left and it's pretty much uh, back like a new chain would be. I've got a jump pack in the golf cart we'll get out and he can fire it up and we'll check the blow by on the engine. Transmission charge pressure. All that good stuff we did buy this we'd probably put new pads on it for sure we got a new battery in it somebody's probably left the key on been jumped a million times I see marks on it we got 1.8 volts Why? Because I ain't turned it on. Try that. You ready? I'm gonna yeah. bump you up. You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. I shut you off too quick. You ready? Yeah. Go ahead. So that right there told me when I go to off, that's the alternator. Well, it says it's charging here. Yep. So I can tell I got that shut off. It's charging 14.6 volts, so the alternator's working on it. 
I'm gonna get this out of his way here before he runs me over. Check the play. The play. Move the plate up down. A little bit of play right there in that ball. This joint here is. Need some new pins and bushings in there. What this one looks like. Needs a little pin and bushing work. Blade face is pretty good. I haven't picked the blade all the way up. I'm gonna look underneath up. Sometimes these guys run these cutting edges down till they get too far into the bolt. Somebody's actually took pretty decent care of that. It's got plenty of room on it, so that tells me uh, it's had a little bit of maintenance. I'm gonna open the side up here. Check the blow by an engine. I don't see any blow by whatsoever. I'll hop up there and check the antifreeze on it. Caution lights. Antifreeze looks okay. That's an air filter restrictor light. And that's a extra set of lights there. I'm going to read the codes. That one active code. Engineer filter restricted. Go back here and read all the stored codes. Oh, it's got 20 stored codes, and it's hard town how old those are without looking at them. A bunch of generic codes. Machine showing 8,400 hours. We'll go in here to um, I think it's in machine settings. It says track info there. If nobody's changed the transmission controller, we can uh, show them 2,300 forward miles, which seems a little low. 2,800 reverse. Somebody's been backing up as much as been going forward. We got 3,600 forward hours and almost 1,900 reverse hours. So, what's that about? It's a lot of idle time. 2,500 hours idle time or so. Could be right. We got air conditioning on. Yeah. What's the charge pressure? Turn the engine up and look at that. Keep an eye on that while you're running the charge first. Make sure your ripper's up there. dirty that light was on we might pull it out and look at it so it shouldn't be smoking quite that much black That's good Huh? I 
seeing it smoking black a little more than it should. Let's see if this air filter is air filter is plumb dirty or what it is. I mean it's not terrible. Exchanged at 8400 hours, 8385. It's got 8435 on it. Hang on. Needs a lot of stuff to it. It needs the bottom rollers are shot. Needs pads. Missing ripper shanks. Needs pin and bushing work. Tractor needs. Five six thousand dollars throw that real quick time it gets cleaned up track pads and painted you'll have seventy five hundred dollars in that got to figure into the price it's missing ripper shanks here somebody's gonna want all those sure might be able to pull a ripper off and sell it separate a lot of people don't like rippers make up some money that way but we'll mark that one down in the book what all it needs and we'll move on to the big 850. All right, got my book out, wrote down on that uh, 650 there, and that 450 had water and oil. I wrote down it needs $7,500 spent in that 650. That tractor is probably, it's a 2011, you know, it'll probably bring, oh, in the 50s, 60. It's got some hours on it. So, you know, you guys got to buy it, you got to ship it home. That costs a lot of money, and figure all that stuff in there. That stuff I'll do later on but uh, dad's over there in this uh, 2017 850k showing 3700 hours so that means it's going to have def fluid on it anything past about 15 16 does so yeah it's got def sticker right there on it def tank up there Check the play on this thing. Got a little bit of play back here. It's still got plenty of shims on the ball. I'm gonna check the uh, bushings. Feel pretty decent. About 80%. Sprockets still got some life left. All right, checking play in the blade. That center center bushing plumb out of that dude. It looks like. I mean that is plumb. Before I'm gone there. I don't you guys see that moving around. I always like to look up at these trunnions up here and make sure they're tight. A lot of people don't grease these. I don't know how somebody runs stuff like this and don't take care of it. Bunch of play down here in these balls. Still got some shims left in it. I don't know why people can't take shims out, but they don't. Stuff that we'll all take care of. We do get Had a little bit of play in there. The carriage is decent on it, yeah. It's still got some life left in it. Good tall pads. These K series, they put the controllers out here, which I'm not a big fan of, where they get dust and dirt in them. He's gonna run a little bit, I guess. Pick the blade all the way up. Sure they've not wore this one in the dirt. That's not too bad. It's seen way worse. Still good shape yet. Let's look at the blade corners and faces. He's probably trying to figure out how to turn the throttle up. Throttle up on the. Uh, K's are up here on the side. Nope. You what? Right here. Okay. We're showing 3,700 hours. Mm -hmm. Dang. Codes. I got this thing all locked up. Stored codes. Air conditioning. Check 
that can blow by. Ah, uh, maybe. Somebody's put that on there. Pretty good. Take it out and try it. There's some squeaking going on that we shouldn't. You guys hear that squeaking? Got that upper roller in the back's out of it. Bearing John. Definitely needs an upper roller. That auxiliary hydraulics on the back. Thing you got to look for these bigger tractors have a pivoting bar in the center. You got to make sure they don't have a bunch of play in them. The blade's got a bunch of play back and forth, mainly because that joint's out of there. See that joint right there moving? That bushing's out of there. Not a big deal to fix, but if they've not watered the housing out, if they've let that thing go too far, then that pin's in there metal to metal where it shouldn't be but not bad it needs some work done to it like everything else here so needs a top roller for sure and uh, who knows what you get into at this center joint in there take a look at it definitely looks like it's eight in the housing some so it's gonna get somewhat costly and time consuming to fix again that tractor needs some money spent on it too so I'm gonna write the stuff down in the book on that one I think we'll move down and maybe look at an excavator or two if guys like this kind of stuff definitely let me know all right we're down here looking at John Deere excavators and Somebody's took the key out of all of them. So, let's see if we can find, I think it's this uh, key here. I got some eight keys. I think that's more. I think it's this one right here. Go down there and see which one Dad's got picked out. He just jumps around, hops around on the one he likes the most. A whole bunch of 160s. And... Is this the one you like the most, or what? Yeah, yeah. Coming out of the oil field. Seal boy, boy, isn't that Texas? Seals. I, th I think so. Oklahoma, maybe. Yeah. Oh, what number did you jump on here? 4798. 210G. Got a thumb on it. Showing 4,200 hours, windshield wiper works. Quick look down the carriage. Quite a bit of adjustment left. Sprockets look decent. Definitely got some life left in it. The excavators usually don't get too much external wear. They get a lot of internal wear because they sit there and rock back and forth all the time. But internal wear is that pin and bushing the wear inside yourself instead of the outside are kind of opposite the dozer checking out the thumb there we'll look for play in these joints here this machine not having too many hours on it i wouldn't think it'd be too bad of shape there's a little bit right there that's the major then we'll check the main boom pin up here Nothing too bad, quick down there. The main thing you really gotta watch and nobody pays attention to is this turntable bearing down here. You gotta make sure there's no play in it. A lot of people 
forget about that. Don't grease those. I'll kind of keep an eye on this turntable here as he's running it. I'll look at that. I'll look at the carb car body and make sure it's not turning. So. oil field I'm just giving the machine a quick once over everywhere make sure it's got enough power to idle to pick itself up a lot of times you get on machines down here and they won't even do that they tell you something about the hydraulics real quick so. of course we'll go in there and make sure it don't have any codes I see this one is new enough it's got DEF fluid on it main bearing looks really tight on it so okay code showing up on it no yellow lights. Those hours, right? 4,200 showing that. I'm gonna go up and check the engine real quick. We'll go up and make sure there's nothing extremely wacko going on. This machine's pretty new. Tighten all these up. Oh my gosh. And you got the 6068 in it. A little bit of blow by. Nothing excessive. Turbo looks original. Overall, it's a pretty nice machine. Make sure the boom's not bent. I've seen them. Something be tweaked a little bit on them. This one all looks pretty good. I've seen everything at these auctions. You never know what you're getting. You gotta watch this stuff because a lot of people send stuff to an auction for a reason. So you really gotta look at everything really close. that filter fairly up to date on its maintenance somebody's taking care of it another thing you got to watch for too is this stuff getting flooded out and sent to auctions and it's hard to tell not been underwater has it a lot of times look for dirt it's on the places where dirt wouldn't hang out like underneath stuff upside down, you know, dirt's gonna collect on top of stuff like this. But if you see mud and dirt up under there on stuff, it'd be a telltale sign it's been underwater, especially stuff you see down Louisiana, places like that. Yeah, did you get my keys? Yeah, pretty nice overall. Yeah, and they had got them long teeth, they've been removed the teeth or yeah, yeah. Oh, I got them pointy yeah. teeth yeah. that quick couple to stop. mark that one mark that one down here in the book it's 47 what do they have here? Oh, gone. The hand, hand rail's handle's gone. gone they probably tore it off yeah. took it off so nobody would see it I'll write this one down in the book and we'll go to another one all right gonna check the other one out right next to it this one's a little older machine, still a 210G, but it doesn't have DEF fluid. 6,200 hours. 6,200 hours. He's number 4799. 6,200 hours. And again, you gotta watch those hours. Got a little bit of play back here in that pin. It's mainly probably in the bucket boss back here 
you gotta watch those wires because people can change the hour meters out and the dashes and all that good stuff. I've actually got a computer with me. I can, if I think the hours aren't right, I can go back in the computer and uh, read the engine hours on there too. So a little bit of play there. Nothing super excessive, just a little bit in the bucket. Through its paces, make sure the hydraulics are fast and smooth like it should be. Make sure the cylinders are holding up on it while he's running it. I've seen, seen them where you push down on them, they'll just drift right back off. The yellow lights flashing, red lights. Got a caution light here showed up. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Let's see if we can check engine. <laughs> check <laughs> engine. That means they want you to call John Deere and plug it in their little computer. It's always lovely. It could mean uh I'm gonna go up and check the blow by and stuff on it. Could mean all kinds of things, it's hard telling. It might be something we'll have to throw a computer on and see what that code is. A little bit of blow by. Quite a bit of blow by. I see that smoke here. A little bit more than I'd like to see. A little bit more blow by than I'd like to see. Um, which blow by, if you watched any of my previous videos, we uh, rebuilt it engine on dirt perfect's dozer had a bunch of blow by it means it's probably had some poor maintenance on it because no more hours and it's on it uh, it shouldn't have quite that much i just shut it off it's got too much blow by i hear something rattling i couldn't tell what it was yeah i mean it's not terrible but it's more than it should have for the machine itself ain't that bad hydraulics yeah somebody's Okay, you rashed it. No, I mean it's it's the engine still decent. It's just showing more hours and what'd you say I had on it? Six. Sixty-two hundred. It's showing more like eight or nine thousand hours. So I'm gonna write that. Need to punch code in. Do it. Check code. Yeah. Probably something to do with the emissions. check codes and we got blow by might be something we circle back to we got 160 it's got quite a probably too many hours on it for me you guys see it's got almost 9,000 hours on it I don't like selling stuff getting that much on these smaller machines that was a big machine 350 or something to be a little different so 479 a lot I'm gonna Mark that one out. 
a X that out. That 225D. What is that? 4800. Not showing hours. That means it's got quite a few on it, I'd say. Let's see, fire it up and see what it's. Uh, or see how many hours on it. So if you guys see that orange on that sticker or that boom cylinder there, dipper stick cylinder. Hitachi actually builds these machines for John Deere, or they did up until this month. Um, the only difference is John Deere usually puts their motors in them, so they're actually all made by Hitachi. You can see that orange on there, but as of uh, actually this month, John Deere and Hitachi split up 7,000 7, hours. See, it's an old rental machine too. John Deere and Hitachi actually split up. Um, They've been together probably since the 80s, I believe. So um, I think they're just going their separate ways. John Deere learned a lot from them and they helped Hitachi get into the market. But uh, nothing wrong with Hitachi machines at all. So we'll definitely be checking those out. i am seeing a bunch of play on this. Link back here if you guys can see that. Big old gap there, that thing's all bit and tweaked. some kind of leak over here that just water it's like water that thing's not sounding the best it looks like it don't even have enough power to pick itself off the ground Don't pick itself up. So I was talking about earlier, he was um, always put the buckets down. That one won't even pick itself up, so it's lacking hydraulic power. Quick and easy way to tell that that one's no good. That's probably why it's at the auction. We're going to X that dude out. Where that one's at, right here. No good. I'm going to check one more out down there. A couple little ones we'll have to check out too. That's yeah, got too many hours on it. T45G. So the 245G is actually the same thing as a 210G, even though it's got a bigger number. It still has the 210 uh, boom. The only thing that makes a difference is it's actually zero tail swing. So. This tail, you notice, is a lot shorter, a lot uh, taller. Um, it's got a little longer carriage on too, I believe, but they look totally different, but they're actually the same thing as a 210 right next to it. Hours. How many? 3,900 hours. So, yeah, everybody thinks, oh, I got a big 245 zero turn. It's still the same thing as the 210G. Exact same, exact same boom and stuff on there, so thing sounds a little bit rattly from back here. I know you guys probably can't hear that. It may have just been... A... I think this one actually has... Um... I think this one has a Zuzu engine in it. On these zero tail swings, they're actually all Hitachi. They don't have the John Deere engine in them. You guys see this. It's crazy what... Uh... You guys see all that movement in there? bushing is plumb out of that boom it's probably gonna cost more to fix than what it's worth somebody's gonna buy it not knowing that if I fix that it's several hundred dollars not a thousand bucks or more to fix that you buy bushings and labor you could be 1500 in there real quick so Little weak, yeah. It won't even pick itself up there to idle, so let's move on and check those 350s out. We'll mark this one down in the book and we'll go check those 350s out and we'll probably wrap this up. 
all right over here in the big 350 this is like an 80,000 pound machine this is Hitachi too it's got a John Deere John Deere 9 liter engine in it same thing it's in the 850J's how many hours are you showing? 5627 5627 so that's not terrible for a machine this size at all these things run a lot longer bigger machines you can always run with higher hours we shouldn't see very much play in it it's been taken care of I've seen a bunch of this bucket it's probably an older used bucket the pin looks pretty tight in the boom so it's not as bad as that previous one a little bit of play in there it's mainly in this bucket down there somebody's not greased as much as it should that's for sure See how this one's picking itself up off the ground to idle? That's how they should go. Big old bucket on there. Looks like somebody's done a little bit of welding on it. Got a deuce on bucket on it. Look at that turntable play. It's pretty good on it. Check the drive motors on it. low and high you try you try low and high on your speed you got it low a little knobberry twist huh You on the right one? Right here? Yeah. Ain't getting any difference in it. Wasn't changing? Uh-uh. No. No codes. This one's got DEF fluid on it, I see. Or is that the exhaust filter? That's DEF fluid. No change in it. Let me help off. It seemed like it was in low. He's done a quickie paint job on the tail there. That track's in low. Not shifting to high. Could be an electrical problem. Could be something major. It's probably electrical like everything else. The undercarriage looks really solid on it. The DEF wood tank here. I'm gonna hop up here. Up here and check the uh, engine. Concrete on it. Go. The old nine liter.
turbos. that coolant real well. I see it's really dark and it's a little bubbly. Kind of concerns me. Kind of concerns me. You guys heard me. It's kind of dark and I've seen some bubbles in it which a few bubbles is somewhat normal but yeah it's got uh, that coolant's awful dark and it's bubbling a little bit. I'm gonna Drag them forward. X that one out. Somebody else will buy it thinking it's good and give too much money for it, so not even sense wasting any time of fixing it. That was uh, 94, I think. They got a whole bunch of them, it's not here yet. 47.94. Fifty-four sixty-one. I'm forty-seven ninety-three. You hold the key over. Those Hitachis are delayed. That's got to be up. Yeah. Turns the power off when I turn the key on. Oh, the battery's dead. Oil oil field companies had this one. Do what? Says key should be off for five minutes prior to start starting. I'd say the battery's dead on it. Good old auction people. This thing's really rusty. It's been in the yeah. I'm not liking what I see on this one. Got a mission sign here on something. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. It's been in some next an ocean or something might be hard for you guys to see but then beat and thumped all over things are dripping out oil might be a lineup or leaking i don't know that thing's had a rough life it's not something i want to uh, sell to my customers on the other end it's all beat and thumped up under there that tells me a lot of how that uh, machine's been taken care of so yeah, it's all beat up. Something fierce. Got this pin in here. It's not even right. Somebody's not been taking care of it. That's for sure. So I think that's a pass on that one too. All right, guys. I think it's going to be a wrap on this video. It's probably getting long. Let me know if you like seeing this kind of stuff. Um, I've got like probably another 150 machines to look at here. So, you know, we just looked at... Uh, I don't know eight excavators and only one or two is good out of the bunch so that's unfortunately what you got to go through you just can't uh, just can't go buying stuff bidding stuff online unless you're wanting problems and somebody else is going to pay full price for those machines that have problems down there not knowing that so you can't buy them thinking you're going to buy them cheaper and fix them up most of the time unless there's something catastrophic wrong with them so anyway um, let me know what you think in the comments below if you guys want to see something else you've seen in the video today be happy to check it back out it's actually monday here i'll try to get this uh video put back out um probably tomorrow or so so if you guys do see something that uh interests you let me know and i'll try to get another video on it if not i gotta get through a bunch of this equipment and look at it so it takes a lot of time to go through everything you know i may get on 100 200 pieces and maybe only buy a half a dozen out of the bunch so that's just part of it may not buy any so this stuff all looks pretty from the road, but until you get up to it and start reading all the history, I'd like to go into some of these machines a little more do, but I just, there's so many of them here and, and uh, I just can't do them all and get them videotaped and spend that much time on them. So you guys kind of get the picture of what we do and all that good stuff. So um, you like this kind of stuff, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of it, you might consider subscribing so you don't miss out in the next video. Cause like I said, we do have some more, uh, videos coming up down here in Florida so we'll catch you guys next time